You wake up in your hideout with nothing but your trusty Makarov, your pet rat, and a guitar. That is your welcome to Paradox of Hope. Paradox of Hope is a single-player VR extraction shooter heavily inspired by games like Stalker, Into the Radius, and Escape from Tarkov. The game was released in an early alpha state on the Steam recently and has been receiving constant updates with tons of new content such as a second chapter to the game's story. To be honest, most of my time spent with the game has been having fun with the raids game mode, where you have a base with a stash, a trader, and quests to complete in order to earn rubles and up your reputation level. With consistent content heavy updates like these and the graphics slash overall okay most of the time performance of the game, oh no I'm lagging. It may be hard to believe, but this game is being developed by a single person. That's already too much intro, let's get to the game. So you start with a Makarov with no mags, a lighter, a knife, and some other basic garbo. You get 800 rubles, you can go to the trader to buy a couple mags if you want, gaze longingly at the wonderful things you are too poor to buy, and then go into your first raid. You are greeted by darkness. And if you don't do the tutorial like an idiot, you won't realize that you have a lighter until near the end of your second raid and wander through the darkness for an hour and a half. I was going around not being able to see anything when I had a light this entire time. There are big doors you have to find a valve to open. Wooden boards you can break through sometimes. What's the deal? Can I break this? I don't think I can break this. Well, this is breakable. And I'm out of bullets. And of course, terrifying mutants that run at you and make you shit all over yourself. Oh my god. <gasps> there are also other humans you can brutally murder, but I unfortunately haven't gotten the chance yet. Anyway, you fight mutants, explore the dilapidated interior of this forgotten bunker, scavenging anything you can get your hands on. You gather many rubles worth of garbage, and then your headset suddenly dies and you lose all that stuff. So you go in, do your second first raid, get the mags, realize you're poor, etc. You fought and killed a mutant. You wasted the rest of your ammo trying to break an unbreakable board of wood. You see the extract, but it's guarded. That's an extraction point, but there's a mutant guarding it. Uh, I don't know if I can fight one of those with a knife. You don't care. You came all this way, almost died, sprinted through radiation, found some toilet paper or something. Some toilet paper, let's go. I can wipe my ass now. You have to bring back something to show for your efforts. So you pull out your comically large knife, and you reluctantly charge forward. Hey, pussy fart. <sighs> so stupid. <laughs> I got him. Fuck you, idiot. I'm too cracked. You succeed. Barely alive, you make your way back to camp, excitedly waiting to accept your reward. You sell everything that you bravely gathered from your travels, and you have just barely enough to heal yourself back up and replace the two mags you dumped into a wall. This is basically the formula. You play, you learn, you fight different mutants and bandits, taking whatever you can find and completing what quests you can. Buy better armor, better weapons, mod those weapons, get a bigger backpack. I'm fairly certain the levels are procedurally generated. I've played a few raids and the layout has been very different each time. I've played the story too, and it's good, but I don't want to talk about it and risk spoiling it for those of you who wish to play the game. So now, the final question. Do I recommend the game for the price in its current state? The answer is a resounding and probably pretty obvious yes. It's good, not super unstable, the developer seems reliable, this is his passion project and he loves working on it. He's always answering the community's questions in his discord. I've been following the game since it was made public and now that I've played it, I can safely say that I'm not disappointed. With the variety in gameplay options, the depth of the raid systems, and an incredible combat variety, this game is definitely worth the $20 price tag. You're also supporting a solo developer, which feels nice. That being said, if you made it this far in the video, be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you all next time. Peace out.